Hey everybody, I finally had a chance to set up the wall enclosure. Check this out. It's the same color as the tent. It's got the it's got the um, the ivory color for the roof and the olive color for the walls. Still has the wrinkles, but this rain that's kind of coming down, it's drizzling a little bit. You probably can't see or hear it. I can hear it uh, hit me and you can hear it hit the tent a little bit. But uh, that will get a ri rid of a lot of the wrinkles, kind of like it has on the tent itself. I had to move the tent because it was starting to kill the grass. I think where I had it before and I don't want to kill the grass so I just moved it over to the side um, so let me show you this thing it's got these large windows that I can unzip and zip up I've got the stove running and I can feel the heat coming out so let's go inside so I'm gonna zip this closed and there's a big difference in the temperature just in the awning area where I'm at so here's the tent area okay I have the door open, I have the window open, Well, the, it still has the screen, but this heat dissipates really, really well. I can, I can feel it really well. So the awning's really nice because it's supported by these bars. It has its own pole system, you can see on the roof, seven and a half feet tall. Um, it's really secured everywhere. Around the perimeter, there's stakes everywhere. Um, the, it, it attaches both the roof and the wall attached to the to these poles here the poles telescope so you can make it nice and taut on the side it attaches with heavy-duty velcro now I have no floor in here I just put that for fun that's that um, like that patio floor oh it's hot in here um, that's nice but it's got that it's that patio like carpet that you can get at Lowe's i um, tempted to get a piece that's big enough for this since I'm keeping this out all winter. But uh, maybe I'll put a tarp in there or something. Because I want to be able to leave this door open and not have to worry about bugs. I might still get a couple bugs, but nothing, you know, if there's a tarp there, it would limit that. So, <clears throat> got the fire going in here as you can see. See that? It is nice and warm in here. I just started it up about 10 minutes ago. The thermometer says that it's not super cold outside to be fair it's not super cold but it is it is 67 degrees in here and climbing this thermometer has a delay too so it's it is definitely warmer than 67 degrees but okay i have to interrupt that video because after i had finished that video i grabbed the thermometer it is it is so hot the thermometer now shows 82 and that's in this um this awning area it's it definitely feels a little cooler as i walk into the main tent area i can feel especially obviously the closer i'm standing to this thing but uh i mean over here it's even a little bit warmer than in the awning area but i bet it's I would guess it's around five degrees. This is this. There's such a delay in this that if if I put it in there, I'd have to wait ten minutes just to figure it out. And then this temperature may have already changed, so it's a difficult comparison. But definitely heats up the entire tent. This twelve by twelve area, and then this eight by eight area. Very happy with it. And uh, like I said, it's raining outside a little bit. I haven't gotten any water in. It's just a light storm. I can hear it sizzle when it hits the the pipe but uh, yeah you can see that I I pushed this up a little bit I pushed the stove jack up a little bit just so that if water did happen to run down the tent it would you know go around the sides and wouldn't pool up in a low spot and then come inside the tent but that's all right I'm gonna set this down and tell you more about the the enclosure so the enclosure as you can see it's got those six large screened windows I can open those from the outside and roll them up in a storm like this, I'm tempted, because it's a, it's a pretty light storm, I'm tempted to, to do that for you. So you can see that even in light rain, you can have those open and you're not going to get any water in. But I don't, I don't want, I've got the stove running and so I don't, I, I want to test out how well it will hold heat in. And if I open those windows, I'm going to lose the heat, obviously. So I don't know if you can hear that. One of the things that I love about the Kodiak tents is when it rains it's like white noise you can hear every little tap 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 uh, you can probably hear the fire too 
Anyway, um, so this camp chair in there is, is is a pretty big camp chair. It's a little bit deceiving. So this this area is a little bit bigger than you might think. It's eight by eight. Oh, cool thing I forgot to show you about this. One one of my favorite things about this is that it also attaches using this zipper. So it zips starting on this left side, goes all the way up to the top, and you can see that there's a rain sleeve um, right here. This part's a rain sleeve, so this pole goes up and out and across the other side of the tent. Um, but anyways, the zipper comes back down this way and it ends right here. So, yeah, that is nice and warm. I mean, I can just, I can feel that just right through the window, just the radiant heat from that stove. So I'm really impressed with that. I did not think that the heat would, I don't know, I didn't, I, I didn't know how well the heat would come through that window. I think it would come through that window even if this door were closed, I'd still get a ton of heat in here, so. Um, and if I wanna keep the heat in there, obviously I can just close that window up, roll that up, close this one. Um, if you wanna see how I put the, the awning up, it's very easy, just stay tuned, it'll be at the end of this video. But it probably took me about, well, I, I did it with just one person because I wanted you to see how, how it can be done. And I, it probably took me about 20 minutes. So first time I've ever set this one up, I have set up on the awning on the, uh, the 12 by nine cabin tent. And it's very, very similar, very close. I mean, it might even be the same poles actually, but, uh, that tent, that particular tent doesn't have a canvas wall enclosure. Has a wall enclosure, but not if it's not canvas. It's a poly denier. It's very good, very strong, very lightweight, but it isn't canvas. So if you want it to be a perfect match, this lodge tent is a perfect match. You can unzip it as opposed to just rolling it up and attaching it to the wall. Um, it's got this this storm guard on the bottom. So oh, and it and it stakes around the perimeter on the outside too. So really really strong um, I'll have to take some pictures with the windows open so you can see how open it feels here you go this shows the the tent with all of the windows including the ones in the enclosure and I know it's fall and I didn't even think about demoing I mean it's been so cold I didn't think about showing you how well this tent is going to hold up in the summer there are windows everywhere and there's that storm window there so if it's raining you can still leave this thing open and get some ventilation. It's got the no CM screen me uh, mesh over for the screens and that is an awesome, awesome material. So let me show you from every angle and just imagine that it's a hot, blistering day. You can get some nice cross breeze going through and here it is from the inside. I mean, there's just, there's just you can see everywhere. If you're in a beautiful campsite, you can just open everything and just enjoy the beauty of the campsite that you're in. All right, true test of my camera. I really want to get this for you guys so you can see <laughs> how the water beads on here. See that? It's pretty nice. Didn't get a drop of water in. It wasn't raining. It wasn't raining super, super heavy. Not enough where I would really uh, feel comfortable saying that I didn't get a drop of water in. I'm gonna wait till it's a, a pretty good storm before I give you that evaluation. But this still shows you how the water beads up on it. Stay tuned if you want to see how uh, it, how easy it is to set up. And if this was helpful, please like this video. And if you have any questions, don't be shy. Just comment below and I will answer them. I look at every single comment. So I appreciate any comment or any feedback you have about these videos. Hey guys, I am going to put up the wall enclosure for the, the Kodiak Lodge tent here. Um, had to move it. Had to move it because it was <laughs> starting to kill my grass there. The tent keeps it warm inside and so the bottom even the floor you know the grass normally is kind of dormant this time of year and it's still pretty dormant I mean it was up there for several weeks but I moved it I didn't want to kill the grass so it's kind of in a different position than where you've seen it in previous videos um, 
I put the I'm ex I'm expecting some rain today, so I put the flu cap the the uh, rain cap on the top of the flu, and I I'll also put a little bit of tin foil, just one uh, sheet of tin foil around the perimeter of that stove jack hole, so that if rain comes down, it would minimize any moisture coming in. We'll see. It's supposed to rain today, so that's the whole reason I'm in a rush to put up that wall enclosure. I'm excited to show you. Okay, let's get started with assembling this. The awning, this is the box it comes in. That's the carrying bag. Here's the wall enclosure. You can tell because it's the olive color. This is the awning section. So it comes in two pieces. And there's the poles. Last thing in here are the instructions. So obviously we need to take the guy ropes off of the front since the awning's gonna be there anyway. So I'm gonna pull those off. We'll still use them. We'll just attach them to the awning instead of those poles. So you begin with the roof portion. I'm looking for the zipper. It starts, oh actually you know what, first you, you before you zip it, this pole is still a structural pole that you leave in place and you put this sock um, up through that. This will kind of help prevent rain and moisture but you just put that pole through there. I tell D untelescope the pole there's little buttons on it so that it would be a little bit easier to do this step and then afterwards I'll just use the push pins and and uh, telescope it back out but you start with the right zip it up very heavy duty zipper really nice and then it, you'll notice it's got grommets so and they they match the tent body so you put that top flap over so that rain and moisture will not get through that seam. Okay, next are the poles. Now I'm going to begin with these two front poles labeled number one here. Since I'm doing this just by myself, I'm going to use the guy ropes to help stabilize everything. So I'll just put this one here, stake it down, same with this one here. Then we're gonna do the, the ridge pole. You see it's got this hook right here. This hook, the way this is designed is so nice. This hook will go into the receiving hole at the top of the ridge pole that's on the tent. So I'll walk back through here and take a, a picture of it. Oh, and you see that there's that thumb screw. I'm gonna loosen the thumb screw and turn the hook downwards. I want all of the thumb screws facing downwards. I don't want them actually touching the canvas. Probably not a huge deal if they do, but I'm just taking that precaution. So I'm gonna take the hook and you can see if you look closely up that hole that there's a, a little the black dot. That's the receiving hole that's built into the, the upright ridge pole. So I'm gonna put that in like this with the thumb screw you can see down so it's not pushing up on the canvas. And then it just telescopes, so I'll telescope it all the way out to the end and then use the upright pole to stabilize that. Next, we're going to do the, the two um, horizontal poles that will be on the left and the right side. And they telescope. Again, put the thumb screw down. And it just attaches to the upright pole on the left hand and on the right hand side, just like this. And finally, these are the two front, like the, that make up the, the A-frame part of the front. Since I just have one person doing this, I'm going to just put them both onto that main upright pole, like this. You'll notice that there's plenty of, of putting these, these corners on and taking them back off when you when you put the new the next pole on. But that's basically it for the awning. Um, I'm just telescoping everything. I'm, I'm just making it so it's nice and taut. And then you'll notice that there's these little loops, these little Velcro-like loops. They are all the way around it, which is really nice. It will help hold the awning, the roof portion to the poles, and then the wall enclosure will have some too. So when we get to the wall enclosure, you'll notice that those are also, they, they just attach to the same pole. So here's the the, the wall enclosure part and it is canvas and it just attaches to the same poles and it attaches 
with the Velcro loops onto there. Um, obviously, you can. it's pretty easy to tell where it goes. You can see the Kodiak logo in the bottom left. And the, the big zipper will obviously, that'll be in the front so that you can enter and exit that. So on the, on the side, there's these heavy duty Velcro strips that I'm just pushing together. That's how it attaches to the wall portion. And I tuck the, the, uh, the bottom portion under, attach all the loops all around. And then next, you'll see that it comes with a, a bunch of stakes. And these are not the little stakes that a lot of the awnings have. Um, these, are, these are just the same ones, the same 12 inch ones that your tent has. So I'm just gonna place them around the tent and then I'm gonna go around and hammer them afterwards. But you can see they're everywhere. And those two in front of the door are probably the most important because they make it so that when you pull on the zipper, the floor, the, the bottom stays in, in place. Then I'm putting the guy ropes on. Now pay attention to these guy ropes. This is important if you plan on camping and you're gonna have some snow or rain. You pull on that one and, and it's just a like a nylon loop, but you pull on that one and it and it pulls the roof nice and tight so that it's not sagging much. Now if you get snow on there, it's gonna sag anyways, but it still supports it. If you get snow on there, you're gonna have to, to you know wake up and, and knock it off if it gets too heavy, just push it off from the from the inside. But then uh, go around all the way, pounding in the stakes. Oh, I do need to tell you something that's important. It really is important to use a rubber mallet. We, these are big stakes. So sometimes we get these big dudes that have these massive, massive, like, I don't know, they're just these massive Thor hammers. And they go crazy on these stakes because they don't want to pound them like this, like I am, hitting it 10 times per stake. So they'll whack them so hard, but they'll miss. And they'll hit the, the, the strap of the tent and just rip it, or they'll damage the tent. Um, my recommendation is just to make sure you don't do that. And we're done. It's that easy, guys. Thanks for watching.